greetings, greetings, and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? How are you doing? I clap my hand because I want to start this day by saying how grateful I am for being here with you, present. And this is what life is. Life is like, you know, we yesterday I was uh, talking about uh, life and the changes in life. And they were talking about uh, this pandemic, how it's affected them. And they said, but it's not only me, it's everyone. How it is affected uh, our economy and their whole health system and everything. And they had never seen anything like this in their life. And I was thinking about that. Haven't we seen different things in our life? And this is yet another phase, except it's not uh, a local one, it's a global one. So in life, it all depends to our perspective and how we see things because life belongs to the living and he who lives must be prepared for change. And it's all change from being a child to being a teenager, from going through puberty to adulthood. Uh, we go through phases in life at all times. And today is all about our life, the, the guidance. We all need guidance. We all need mentorship. And it's okay to be vulnerable and ask for help. Right? So today is the 20th of October. Next thing you know, we're already celebrating Christmas. And that is exactly what today's message is. How do you prepare yourself for change? And change is inevitable. We welcome change or we cringe when someone brings a whole new thing in our world. And my question to you is, how do you adapt to change? Um, if it is uh, a me, everything is about you. It's so constraining. It's to go all the way. It's like the me, you know, M and then loop down and then go all the way up and down. So this entire thing, it's a big dip all the way up and all the way down and it becomes about you. No matter where we are, if we can't see where we're going, our GPS, our goal, our vision, we are so constrained right here. The focus is all about right here and when we are here all we feel and all we see is the problems we become so detailed you know just like a picture when you see it from far it becomes flawless and yet when you look much closer you can see the dimples you can see the pimples you can see everything you can see all the problems. And if we concentrate on the small little things, and then we want to push it and dig more into it, or we cover it up, right? And yet the pus and everything is still inside. So how do you cope with change and recognizing your best version how you deal with it so i read something and it was so beautiful and profound hi siddha john how are you thought is the blossom language is the butt and action is the fruit behind it all so if 
thought is the blossom that means everything that we think it makes us blossom plethora of thoughts ideas concepts how we conceptualize things and if the language how we speak it is the butt that makes it open and explain and share then the action is the fruit that's what we get to eat right it's uh, the remains of it afterwards so when we think about something just right now think about all the things that you wanted to achieve it started with a thought and a thought that was bigger than what it is hello Tomisa, how are you dear and if you are here just drop me a line say something if you are watching this on a repeat by all means hashtag repeat because i love to stay in contact with it i love the word plethora yes i love that word the word of plethora it is bigger than more it is bigger than many that's why you know words are so grand words can be words can make it bigger than what is so as we have this bigger vision of what we want to create in life what we desire in life then that thought the moment we speak it you know i say speak it to free it and it can be from sadness, it can be from something secretive, it can be something that we desire. The moment we speak it or we write it, it's like we shared it with the universe, we share it with someone. And that is how we make it and we manifest it. Even poetry, if it is in your thoughts and everything, the moment you write it and share it, now you shared it with the word and with the world and someone reading it can feel your words can feel what you feel in your heart that's why we write poems and poetry books everything that you think if you shared it with the word and with the world why do I say word? Because I'm so stuck on that word, plethora. When you share it with the world, you impact someone else. And maybe not millions, but if one person feels the words that you speak, even the words that I am speaking right now, impacts one person that I can help, I have done my job. If you did not know the word plethora and you Googled it and you learned one word today, then I have done my job. You see, I think in life, when we say life belongs to the living, of course, and the way we live, the way we make an impact is finding our purpose and not all of us know our purpose. So talking to a friend of mine this morning, we were talking about a teenager that was um, brought to me yesterday by a referral and she lost her father three years ago and being 14, it's a big loss. And she has had many help with psychiatrists and treatment and everything. But one thing they had not helped her with is give her permission to feel whatever she wants to feel. And for three years, she has gone through depression, feeling depressed, angry, wanting to commit suicide, attempted suicide, 
seeing a psychologist and psychiatrist, even placed in a rehab to be monitored. But she had never been given permission to feel anything she wants. And yesterday, that's what I did. I said, she says, she's on all kinds of meds. And I'm not saying meds are not good. But one thing I said yesterday was, what do you feel? And if you were to express what you feel, what would it be? She said, I don't know. And I said, then I give you permission to feel whatever you want. Silence. And we just sat there for minutes. I can say 10 minutes. I just held space for her. Did not question her again. Did not ask anything. She looked at me and I just held space. Until tears started flowing. And for the first time, she says, no one has asked me that question. And I said, I'm sure they have. And she said, not the way you did. And that's how the conversation started. What's the difference? What is the difference between the way I ask or someone else asked? And you know one thing she said? She said, no one has asked me and let me think because I don't know the answer. And I said, do you do know the answer? Maybe you're not ready to tell me yet. And she said, well, how do you think I know the answer? And I'm saying all this is because so many times we go places, we meet people, and instead of holding space for them to feel or to think, because we all have the answers within us. But there's times that people are telling us versus asking us and giving us permission for us to feel it, think it, and know it. Because expressing what we feel, when I say express what you think, express what you feel, it comes from the inside, not from here. Words are the things that we feel, but have not realized how to express it. So we say it in words. And I'll ask you to do this. Put your hands straight up. Put both hands straight in front of you, right? And I'm going to ask you to do one thing. On the count of three, you're going to clap, okay? Go ahead, all of you do this. There you go. No matter where you are sitting, take, well, it doesn't even take a minute. Okay. Ready? One, two. Did you clap with me? Did you? I didn't even say three yet. So this is one exercise that now I want to prove that sometimes, although words and thoughts make everything. It's what our action does that makes it happen. So I can sit um, all day long and write affirmation after affirmation. But if I am not doing anything about the affirmation, then it really is not going to make an impact in my life 
or any any anybody else that action if it is not put uh, if the words are not put into action then it really does not matter so if i were to do this and say on the count of three go ahead and clap and i say one two and on the before the third i clap and you clap with me that means it is the action the impact of the action that matters more than the words because you did not follow through until the th i said three you followed the action not the word does that make the, does that make sense we follow actions we follow what people say we repeat the things they do and not the things that we hear as much so we can write affirmation after affirmation and if it has not been if we don't repeat it and do the actions of the words then we can just say the words until it doesn't sink in and for us to do anything it is not making that change so i can hear a lot of things i can hear that someone can tell me i am a fatso but if i do not believe that to be true it's not going to affect me and that's exactly what i did for her my action of silence helped her to first trust me recognize that there is a different modality that i am approaching her with holding space for her versus telling her and number three i validated that what she thinks and feels is important to me it's not hypnotherapy but everything that i do is first to recognize what my client needs and then help her express what they want so that we can find the gps the direction to help her with you know it's so easy for me for a client to come in and for me to take them into hypnosis on the count of one two three sleep i can do a rapid induction or i can do this easy guided visualization if it is for stop smoking yes i can hypnotize someone next month is the great american smoke out and we will be talking a lot about that this month i have helped you people with cancer because it was cancer awareness month so you see change happens when the action is taken the first step into the action and by me holding space for my client the tears that started flowing and she said i don't want to cry i said why not and she said because i've been told crying doesn't help yeah and i said by all means whoever said that is so not right because it may not help someone else but if it helps you and if you want to cry i give you permission to cry also and it's okay to cry because you're not crying for anyone else you're crying for yourself you're validating what you feel you're validating what's inside you and that's what tears are so go ahead and cry as much as you want And I said, but would you mind sharing with me what you're feeling? Another silence. And then one word, I miss him. She misses her father, but she has not been expressing that the father has died and how much she misses him you see we suppress grief 
in so many different ways. Some deal with it by suppressing it, doing drugs, self-punishment, only not to feel, only to numb the feelings. And others do things to express it, to feel it. But when a 14 year old or even an adult has not found the means, the ways to express, that's what suppressing is. And that's what I help with, evoking what was. And it doesn't matter what it is, the feelings, the thoughts, that has been suppressed inside by Band-Aid, by drugs, so that we can embrace, so that she can embrace what she feels, so that she can embrace what she thinks and who she is in the scope of everything that is happening. And an hour and a half later, what do you want to feel? Where do you want to go? How may I help you get there so that she can evolve to the best version of herself? And that is the work that we all do. Sometimes we need help. We need a mentor. We need a guide. And you can always reach out to me. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa. And yes, by trade, I am a clinical hypnotherapist. Why am I saying this now versus in the beginning? Because it's not what I do. It's what I help you with. We don't always have to be hypnotized to feel connected to feel heard, or to feel seen. So that's where Heal Within comes. 23, four years ago, I healed myself through hypnotherapy and then left my a successful position, being a paralegal and assistant to attorney, to do this work so that I can make a difference in someone else's life. And no matter if it is in a group setting, in masses, the way I am with you, or just one-on-one -on -one clients that I love seeing. Either I'm speaking on stages or on different platforms or helping a client. That is the work I am here to do. So, and it doesn't matter if it is through hypnotherapy, hypno coaching, action coaching, stress management, being an anger management consultant or a domestic abuse. Those are all modalities. But what I do is I want you to remember, I treat you as a whole, not the issues you come in for. Even the smoker smokes for a reason. That habit was created for a reason. And the same way as you go to my website, you can check. You can go into About Me and see the video that one of the testimonials, and bless her soul, she says it right there. In one session, I stopped smoking and she had throat cancer. So sometimes it takes one session, sometimes it takes many sessions to make a change in a lifestyle and go from me to we, which is upwards, blossoming, blossoming and recognizing that thoughts help you blossom. The words, the language is the but and the action is truly 
all the fruit. So the fruit of the tree. And a tree blossoms from the top and yet has this strong bark and roots that go beyond Mother Earth. And that's what I want to help you with. If you have bent to become as a strong mother tree. So thank you for being here. Let's add my rate, another good one. Oh, thank you, Adrian. Thank you for being here. If there is any questions, um, by all means, I'm right here. Go ahead and ask if there is anything I can help you with. You always know, please subscribe below. I would love for you to share this message if it resonates with you or you think that someone needs to hear this, please. The best testimonial, I believe, is a referral. And there is nothing bigger and grander than saying, I know someone who needs to hear this or I know of someone who I would like to refer. To heal within, you are only one thought away from going from pain to gain. And that's how we heal within, is realizing that we all have stories. We all do. From my nonprofit foundation that I have, the nonprofit organization that I have, that we help motherless children from ages 8 to 17. If you want to help with that, as a matter of fact, no matter who I work with, a percentage of the proceeds from my company goes to help my nonprofit organization so that we can make a difference in the lives of those children. And everything that we do impacts another person and yours too. So with that, thank you for being here. If you have any questions, if you have any information uh, to refer people, not only to me, to Heal Within, but to our nonprofit organization, by all means, let me know. And if two or three persons should come with a high spiritual aim and with great powers, the world would fall into their hands like a ripe peach. And that was said by Ralph Waldo Emerson. So for today, I thank you for being here. Please share this message. Let us be the link that connects with others. And until I see you next week, which I have a great uh, guest, and you will see all the messages and everything, stay tuned because we will be talking about the GPS to success. And until next week, God bless you and may the universal light surround you.